Hey, what's up guys? Brian here. Today let's talk a little bit about sweet picking. And perhaps we can come up with a few exercises to get us started on this topic. First of all, let's define what it actually is. I would say it comes down to the right hand, the picking hand. And it's the fact that you can play across a few strings in that direction. For example, going down and then all the way up. That would define it as sweet picking rather than the alternate. Okay, sweet picking can be more continuous. It requires less effort overall and it can probably be quicker in the end if that's what you want. Why might we want to go into sweet picking? Well, you can certainly find a few styles that uses it. For example, in jazz, you get something like... Those kind of fast runs does happen in improvisations and it's part of the language. And of course, in rock or heavy rock or some metal, some heavier music, that will feature it a lot with the distortion tone. Being able to sweep, I think, certainly can sort some of the theory out for you. On the left-hand side of things, you can look at the fretboard a bit differently and discover a few more shapes. And on the picking hand as well, it will sort your efficiency out and all the motion and the posture and all of that. So overall, I would say it's a topic that's worth going into, even though you might not want to end up playing like Engve Malmsteen or someone like that. And how we're going to start off with is just a simple G minor seven from the 12th fret. Okay, we're only going to play those four notes. Now, a lot of the time in when you're doing sweep picking, you need to think about note groupings. And what I mean by that is dividing up the, the number of notes that you've got against the number of beats you have. In this case, we've got four notes. And on the way up, it's got three. On the way down, it's got three. Before we reach our starting point, the root note. I would play this pattern as a triplet rhythm. Kind of like one, two, three, four. Well, as a rule for the left hand, I would always hammer on or pull off to accommodate for the fact that the picking hand needs to be able to go down the string and up the string with no repeated strokes on one string unless of course it's it fits the direction that's going in for example this last bit over here it goes up so that's fine to play the top string twice so that's our first sweeping shape we can add one note in order to make it a semiquaver note grouping we can add the f over here before the sweep and that will make us have four notes before we get back to the top one two three four one two three four one two three four we can add another note rather than the f on the third string just behind the g we can play the d which is also part of the g minor seven arpeggio I'll probably finger roll this one with the third finger. And over here, we've run into a little bit of trouble because either you have to leave a little bit more slack, a little bit more finger before you reach the fourth string in order to roll up.
So in this case, I would probably use my second finger. So let's do that both ways. Well, let's use the second finger to play D instead of finger rolling. A little note on the right hand, make sure that your wrist is not moving as if you were doing alternate picking like this. That would go against the idea of sweep picking, which is to keep the wrist straight and steady so it's not moving. We want to keep the hand like this. So a lot of the time it's about control because I find myself tensing up a little bit, especially on the way up. All right, on the way down it's a lot easier, but on the way up, you have to find just the right amount of energy to use. Okay, almost let the pick do a little bit of the work as well. 